our Almighty God. You provide everything we need, and you give us more than enough. Where your grace is enough for us because you have unconditional love for us, unbounding love for us, Lord. At this moment, we wish to praise your name, and we wish, we wish to worship you with all of our hearts. So help each one of us in here right now to just open up our hearts and welcome your presence into our hearts. So in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we pray that amen. Let's keep standing. And uh, it's only three verses today, so let's read from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Let's all read together. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Amen. That's it. Good to see you, Brandon. We haven't seen you in a long time. Good to see you, Dina. <laughs> Great praise. Great haircut. <laughs> uh, today, uh, this week's Jimmy's birthday, so... Ooh. Yeah, so he's... he's <laughs> Jimmy said, what? <laughs> okay, so after, after the uh, thing, we'll get together for our cupcakes again, as usual. Okay. Today, I want to talk about Thanksgiving with you, okay? As you can tell by the title, Give Thanks in All Circumstances. So we give thanks not only when we want to, but we give thanks in all circumstances, in the good time and the bad times, okay? We just had our Thanksgiving, okay? We all probably ate really well. We probably ate more than we should have eaten. And we're probably thankful for, for a lot of stuff. So, let me ask you this question. Are you a thankful person? How many of you say, you know, I'm, I'm a really thankful person? Let me see your hand. All right. One hand and a couple of scratches in the hair. Okay. <laughs> you know, when you think about being thankful, I think we have to think about, do you actively try to be reminded of the things that you are thankful for? Do you actively try to think about the persons you are thankful to? How often do you say thank you to people that you are, that you are thankful to, actually? You know, we think about it, sometimes, what suksro in English? You kind of embarrassed to say thank you. That person knows that I'm thankful. I don't have to say it. I mean, they know. A lot of the times, we don't say thank you that much. How many of you are really thankful to God? How many of you actively think about things that you are thankful to God for? You know, when I look back to when I was your age, when I was in youth, I don't think I thought about being thankful that much. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I wasn't thankful. I was very thankful, especially to my mom, who loved me more than life itself. I mean, she loved me beyond, I mean, almost pudambe. Pudambe is what? Almost a burden to me because she loved me so much. I like, Mom, love yourself a little bit more, please. Love me a little less. That's too much burden on me. You know, I don't want to be the purpose of your life. You know, kind of. She loved me so much. So I was very thankful to my mom, to my friends, to God, to my youth pastor. But I don't think I was consciously thankful. You know what I'm talking about? It's not like I consciously thought about, okay, what am I thankful for? In my heart, in a deep corner somewhere, I was just thankful. I knew I was thankful. I wasn't consciously thinking about 
being thankful for the things and to the people that I was thankful for. Now let me ask you, do you think that it's important to be consciously thankful? Do you think it's important to be consciously thankful? Are you consciously thankful to your wife? Yes. <laughs> Are you consciously thankful to your husband? Yes. Okay. Do you guys, are you consciously thankful for your parents? What do you think may be some good, possible, well, let's talk about the negative first. What do you think would be the positive, possible negative effect for not being thankful? Blood it out, blot it out, just shout it out. What are some of the possible negative effects of not being thankful? Anybody? What would happen if you're not thankful? What do you think will happen? What's some negative things? What are some bad things? Anybody? You become very proud of yourself. Okay. It's like, hey, I did this by myself. It's not like I needed anybody's help. Okay. You become proud. Anybody else? Yeah. You don't like realize what you have. Yeah, you don't realize that you actually have things to be thankful for, right? You don't actually realize that you have people who's looking out for you. And some of the bad part about that also is you become sometimes lonely. You know, you forget the people that, are th that you are thankful for around you, and what happens? You feel like, hey, there's nobody around me. And you feel sometimes like you're alone. I have... I have friends, oh, <laughs> it's okay. I have friends who are like the life of the party, okay? I have friends who are like the life of the party, but the problem is, when I talk to them, but the party is over when they go home, they say, you know what? It's okay being lonely when there's just, you're by yourself. But sometimes I feel lonely when there's even a lot of people around me. There's people around me who are talking, and I still feel, feel alone. Sometimes when you forget the people that you are thankful to, you become lonely. Okay? Okay, okay, guys. Calm down. One of the other stuff is like, she said, you forget that you have things to be thankful for. You may think more about things that you are not thankful for. Instead of saying, I'm so thankful for this, you start to think the negative. Why isn't this like this? Instead of being thankful for what my parents give me, you think about, how come they can't give me more? You know, I still remember, this was this kind of embarrassing, but... Uh, I was in college and, you know, I had a job and, and, you know, I was making money. But this particular night, a friend of mine called me and said, hey, can you buy me dinner? I said, okay. But I didn't, I didn't have any cash at me at that time. So I asked my mom, I said, mom, do you have any money? I paid back next week. <laughs> can you lend me some money? And she said, I'm sorry, son, I just have $20. And then she gave me $20 and... Uh, I'm embarrassed because I got really mad at my mom. I said, what do you think, I'm a fifth grader? <laughs> what am I going to do with 20 bucks? You know, I have to take my friend out, you know, we go out and we eat, it's going to cost at least 100 bucks. What's up with the 20 bucks thing? Yeah, am I a beggar? I got really upset at my mom. I wasn't thinking about it. And then, you know, and then my mom passed away. And then I grew old. and I. Think back to that moment, and I'm thinking how sad she must have been because she only had $20 to give me. You know what I mean? Me now being a dad, I, I realized how she felt. She, I'm sure she wanted to give me more, she, but she just had that 20 bucks. that's all. You know, we weren't living, you know, we didn't have a lot of money. And I could just imagine that 
that pain of not giving what you wanted to give to your child. Okay. Problem with not being thankful sometimes is you become ungrateful. And what happens when you're ungrateful, you are filled with complaints and you grudge. You become a very negative person. Okay? This is a very problem sometimes for all of us because we don't consciously think about being thankful. Okay, let's take the other. What are the <coughs> possible positive things from being thankful? Anybody? Anybody? What are some of the positive things for being, thank being a thankful person? Consciously think about the things that you are thankful for. Anybody? Nobody? Anybody more thankful? <laughs> Okay, sometimes, I think the biggest effect is I become a happier person. When I'm thankful, I become a happier person. And second, people around me become happier because I'm happy. Basically, me thinking of thankful things and being conscious that I actually should be a very thankful person changes me from inside out. And it makes people around me happier because I'm a happier person. I'm a more thankful person. Veterans Day, November 11th, our family went to Muir Woods. How many of you been to Muir Woods? Okay. So, I live in Dublin. We got on the bar, three of us, took the bar to Barcadero Center. Got off the King Barcadero Center, took the ferry, went to Sausalito. We caught a bus from Sausalito to Muir Woods. Spent maybe one hour there, came back on the bus, came back on the ferry, got back onto the board and came back home. It was a really tiring day, you know, because we did all this transportation. And coming back, you know, there were, you know, homeless people in the train and it wasn't dirty and, my, you know, kind of smelly and it wasn't comfortable. Anyway, we got home, and next day, or on the Monday, I went to work, and my wife texted me. And my wife said, you know, hubby, thank you. Because you get up every morning at 6 in the morning, and you go to work, and you write this bar for one hour, and you come back one hour, and you have to go through all these things. I never realized how tiring this is. But I mean, you know, it's just one day, and I'm already tired, you know? And she said, I never thought about it, but I just want to say, you know, thank you for getting up every morning and going through all of that hassle so you could provide for the entire family. And you know what happened to me that day? I was very happy the whole day long. <laughs> right when I got that text message, I was so happy. I mean, it's not like I, there's anything, it's not like it added any money to my bank account. It's not like it made my job easier. It's not like the bar right got shorter, right? But because she became thankful to me and she actually said thank you, I was just filled with this, this, this happiness and this me also. I said, you know, wife, thank you for you know, all the things you do at the house and you're... Because she was thankful, it made me happy and it made me thankful for her too. It's like a positive virus, <coughs> being thankful. Okay? It brightened up not only your day, but the people around you. But you know, everything that I said just now is true whether you are Christian or non-Christian. Right? being thankful. Non-Christians are thankful too, right? It's not like Christians are the only thankful people in the world. Non-Christians try to live what? Positive, thankful lives. They say, you know, don't look at the negative, look at the positive. Don't, don't count your worries, count your blessings. This is why, look at the, look at the glass half full, not half empty, right? 
The world also tries to be thankful, not only Christians. So the question for you is, what is the Christian difference? What is the Christian difference from the world in this thankfulness? Anybody? David, can we get today's uh, verse one up again? Okay. Let's read the first verse. Rejoice when? <coughs> Always. Always. And second is what? Pray when? Continually. And the third is give thanks when? In all circumstances. This is the Christian difference. Christians are people who rejoice always, who pray continuously and give thanks in all circumstances. I think last time I told you my mom died when I was a couple of years older than you. So, you know, and, and, I, and I told you it was just me and my mom. I don't have any siblings. So it was just me and my mom, and my mom died. So basically, I was just it. Now, do you think I could have looked at that as being half full and not half empty? Do you think I could have done that? If your parents passed away right now, can you say, oh, cup is half full, it's not cup, you know, half empty. How many of you would actually do that? I don't think any of you would do that, right? Oh, let's, let me look at the positive side to this. Hmm, okay. No more rules. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe. But then there will be no more people to love. Who, who loves you unconditionally. Those people who love you unconditionally is not there too, right? So, in this world, there's a limit to what you can do about positive thinking. If I didn't have God, I don't think I would have made it. I mean, I think this is inappropriate for your age, but maybe for you and the older kids, maybe you guys could relate. When my mom died, even though I was a Christian, I had a really hard time. I was a junior in college. I was 21 years old. And what I, I mean, I was just, I mean, I felt like there's no meaning to life anymore. I'm like, why should I keep living? Because, like I said, her love was so much, she loved me so much, it was so much of a burden. It felt like, you know, I had to do all these things to make her happy. But then after she passed away, it's like, why should I do this anymore? What's the point to this life? Who cares if I get a good grade? Who cares if I get a good job? You know, I start having that attitude. Again, this is not a really appropriate for, but I mean, it's, it's the truth. I mean, I was 20 years old, I bought a case of Jack Daniels, and I sat home, and I just drank. I didn't go to church. I didn't go to school. I was a student. I just did that. I didn't eat. I didn't have any food. I was just in my remorse. I think if I didn't know God, I would have just continuously been like that, and I don't know where I would have ended up. But what happened? In that sadness, God reminded me, June, your mom is with me. Your mom was, was when she was in the world, she, she went through a lot, lot of rough time because, again, we didn't have much money. And she was always struggling to provide for me, and she was always working two, three jobs, and, and she was always just having a, you know, even though she loved God, physically she was going through a lot of pain. Her spirit was up because she, she loved God and, and she was always praising God. She was always giving thanks to God. And she was always doing a lot of church work because she was also a Tondosane. But her life, her physical life, she went through a lot of suffering, a lot of pain. And she had a lot of illnesses too. So all of a sudden I realized it's like God spoke to me and said, your mom is so much happier with me right now. 
when I realized that, I was still sad. <laughs> I was still sad, but I could endure. Because I knew the truth. And like the Bible said, and the truth set me free. The truth that my mom was in a good place, that she didn't have to go through suffering. She didn't have to work two jobs anymore. She didn't have to get up five in the morning and, and, and go out and... She didn't have to do that anymore because why? She was with God Himself. And God was going to take away all of her tears, all of her suffering. I knew that. <clears throat> I knew that truth, and that truth set me free. Understand? Christian difference is this. Christian is not somebody who just wishful thinking, always has tried to be positive for the sake of being positive. That's not Christians. Christians, there's a reason why we are thankful. Because we know who we are. We know where we came from. We know where we're going. We know what we must do. We know how we should live. We know the ending already. We are with the Almighty God who's going to love us more than any love that I realized till now. More than how much my mom loved me, she, God could, He's a perfect God. He's going to love me perfectly. Unimaginable love. There's a reason why I could be thankful in all circumstances. There's a reason why I rejoice always. How do you rejoice always? You know, can you make yourself happy all the time, 24 hours a day? No. You have to be a little cuckoo to do that. You can't make yourself happy, right? What the Bible is saying is, don't make yourself happy 24 hours a day. Always. That's not what it says. You rejoice always. How do you rejoice always? You have to be a person who is in a state of rejoicing. When does a person become a, in a, come to a state of rejoicing all the time? It's when you're satisfied. When you are fulfilled already. I could rejoice always now. I could go through hardship and pain, but it's not going to take away from my rejoicing because my rejoicing is in the Lord. Nobody could take that away from me. My rejoicing is because I know my wife, no matter what happens to me, she's going to have God. And I'm raising Daniel, so no matter what happens to me and my, my wife, he's always going to have God. <coughs> that gives me, that makes me be in a state of rejoicing. Being fully satisfied all the time. I give thanks in all circumstances because I really don't need anything anymore. I don't need something to make me happy. I already have Jesus Christ and that's all I need. That's my profession of my love for God. If you need more than Jesus to make you happy, you have to look at your faith again. You will not give thanks in all circumstances. You will give thanks when the circumstance is right. When you have a good job. When you have good grades. When you get to good college, I'll be happy. I get bad grades. I go to a bad school. I get a bad job, I become unhappy. Only way you could give thanks in all circumstances is you are already satisfied. And how do you rejoice always? How do you give thanks in all circumstances? Number two, you have to pray continuously. <coughs> how many of you pray besides getting up in the morning and saying thank you for your food? How many of you good? How many of you spend time, spend time with God? Just spending time with God. Wasting time with God together. Just during the day. Just walking from class to class and saying, you know, God, thank you for loving me. I love you. Praying continuously. Because, let me tell you, you can't rejoice always. You can't give thanks in all circumstances if you don't pray all the time. Because if there is no God in your life, if the presence of God is not in your heart, 
Can you be rejoicing? Can you give thanks in all circumstances? No. Understand? <coughs> How many of you did... Okay, don't raise your hand. Just raise your hand in your heart. How many of you did QT this week? How many of you spent time with God this week? How many of you... <laughs> How many of you... <laughs> <laughs> On this Thanksgiving, really thought about the things you are thankful to God about. You know, talk to Daniel about this. Oh, I don't. Daniel asked me not to talk about it because <laughs> he said, "All the girls are teasing me because <laughs> they called him a cute chubby boy or something like that." <laughs> Dad, did you call me a cute chubby boy? <laughs> All they're just picking on me. <laughs> okay, so I'm not gonna talk about Daniel anymore. Anyways. In this Thanksgiving, I want to give you the secret of rejoicing always, being happy all the time in your heart. You have to be a kind of person who reminds yourself of God in your life. Think about things that you are thankful for, and you know that you're going to be thankful in all circumstances. This particular thing I'm doing, it doesn't have to do, be perfect. It can't. It doesn't have to be really going this, this particular way I want it to go. Even if it doesn't, I'm still going to be thankful. I'm still going to rejoice. Because I am with the God Almighty and I'm already, what? Satisfied. I'm fulfilled. I don't need anything else. Okay? As we close today, this coming week, I really want you to be a person who consciously thinks about being thankful. person who consciously spends time to try to pray continuously so that you may be rejoicing always and giving thanks in all circumstances. Can we do that? Can we? Okay, thank you. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. You are such a good, good, good God, Lord. You don't require anything from us except for us to just go to you, Lord. That you will provide everything else. That we could be the prodigal son. We could have wasted our life in this world. We could have been so selfish, self-centered. But as soon as we turn to you, you're going to run after us, Lord, because you love us that much. Help us to be conscious of the things that we are being thankful to, Lord. <coughs> Because it's going to make us happier. It's going to help us to rejoice always. It's going to help us to give thanks in all circumstances. Lord. And I pray that you would help us to be the kind of person who prays continuously, who does QT continuously, who meditates on your word continuously, Lord. Please give us the strength, give us this determination, give us this commitment, Lord. We pray all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.